Hey, shut the fuck up. Well, he is. Oh, God. Um, Paul. Yes, yeah, sir. It's going great. <laughs> the, the thing about the Tracy Morgan thing, it's like... That whole thing this. I thought was bullshit. It was. The, the, the Tracy Morgan thing? It was thing? absolute ridiculous bullshit. But hang on. I, I can't stand people who... Everything's funny, then the shit comes around to them, and then all of a sudden they, st you know, they stop saying it's jokes, they say it's statements. And I'm not saying, because I wasn't there. Oh, wait, no, and wait, he, no, he, wait, got, wait. he got, like, tried... Look, you weren't there, I wasn't no, there, no, that, and I just felt like minute. he didn't get a chance... To say, he just immediately went into apology mode, and then all of a sudden they're parading him around like this trophy. I know I just don't feel I don't feel he got a fair shake. That's all. But I'm but, but here's the thing, and, and this is the only thing I'll say about the or the thing that I believe about this is no, it isn't. But go ahead. Shut the fuck up, Tom. <laughs> you get to say whatever you want. We all get to, right? Absolutely. But the second it comes out of our mouths, it's no longer in our control about how it's supposed to be interpreted. People can hate it, they can do whatever that you want. So every time you say something, like I always say, the only thing I promise my audience is that I wrote something I care about, I say it because I believe it. The second it comes out of my fucking mouth, all you can hate it, you can write your Congress people, you can call your network, and that's the bottom line, is that we all have to deal with the shit that comes to us from saying what we say. Right, but that's my point. I have no point. I want to ask Colin Quinn, because he was on Saturday Night Live, I have no, I have and no with Tracy with Morgan, right. how, how did you feel should he apologized or not? You think that was like you said, he was a stupid. Listen, I don't. Want to... <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. This is how I believe it. Like the person who said it knows what they meant by it. If you process it in a meant... fucked up way, ask him how he meant it first. But well, you I mean... don't get that luxury as a comedian. You don't get the luxury to say, "But I really meant yeah, to no, say I, it this I, way." I, I realize yeah. that. But here's where, what it really rests on: is that the whole thing came off of one guy's blog. Every one guy's interpretation. news item about it. Right. And how do we know he's not a dick? We weren't there. Sometimes some audience people can't see irony did, from well, a million did, miles right. away. But did Tracy deny saying it? No. Did the guy get it wrong? No, those two things. How do you know? know that? Because Tracy didn't say, "Wait, dude, that's not exactly what no, I but said." Whether he said something offensive or not, I just thought it was fucked up that one guy went home, like with, I guess, the greatest memory ever, like a stenographer, and typed it out, and everybody's like, "That's what he said, and that's what he meant," because guy in seat number five F said it. And next thing you know, he's going around, got to apologize. That's kind of a scary thing as a comedian. Well, I've seen it wasn't Tracy's funny. act, like. His show is crazy. It His is show pretty crazy, is pretty yeah. over the top. Tracy's genuinely So it's, it's not though. like he's up there like, what's up with end tables? And then goes into that shit. <laughs> and that's when it comes to me where you're doing like this selective getting offended. I got one I get in trouble for. <laughs> one? <laughs> just, just the one. Just got the one he gets in trouble for. What's the fucking difference between a Jew and Santa Claus? <laughs> Santa Claus comes down the chimney. <laughs> I had a fucking relative who died in Auschwitz. There we go. Okay? That's why I could say this. This gives me the fucking right to say it. Because I had a fucking relative who died in Auschwitz. Apparently the wrong one. <laughs> Fucking do it. I won't touch me. <laughs> Get your fucking hand. Hey, hey, man. Don't fuck whoa, with me. Whoa, whoa, what the fuck? Oh. Hey, hey, hey. I got one thing to say. Yeah. I got one thing to say. Can I say one thing? Live from New York. <laughs> One thing to say. Yeah. If I made one person happy, it's all been worth it. <laughs> wow. wow. He's a true performer. He fucking commits. He commits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where were we? So Bill? anyway, I was trying to remember what he was heckling. I just remember cocksuckers, so I think we were talking about gay people. There we go. <laughs> you know, the fucking lesson.
lesson here is the gay community is, has a very strong activist community who when they hear shit against them, they take it to the mat and, and guess what? Shit happens. Yeah, but I don't agree with that. Guess yeah. what? Shit happens. So, like, we, we, so then you have to just... I mean, if there's one... I mean, because that... you got to tell you, like, that word, it can mean other things. It just can be ball-breaking. Anytime you play sports... I was playing hockey the other day, okay? And this guy, he knocked me down. I felt stupid. I got up. He asked me. He goes, he goes you all right? And I go, yeah, you faggot. Like, it was this oddly intimate moment. He was going, are you okay? And we were on the ice, and I, it made me uncomfortable. And I said, hey, you faggot, get away from me. She so wants to believe that like, you're like, fucking skating around with your buddy on the ice... Figure skating, and we're supposed to believe you're Mr. Fucking Mark. You see what he's doing now? He's using like homophobia. Hey, you're twirling out there in your dress. Hey, you're twirling out there in your yeah, skates. That's, that's what guys do. To... <laughs> this is what guys do. It always becomes. You know what? Hey, you're there, you little, you little sissy boy. That's just ridiculous. It's just, it's, what is what ridiculous? Do you mean it's ridiculous? I don't think that they shouldn't be allowed to be married. I don't think they should be treated like second class citizens. I think the way. You the way... just think you can say faggot derogatorily when you're on the ice when there's nobody gay around. That's what you think. It came out because so, of my so, childhood. But, but you don't but think that they're But, but because of that reason. word, that then it's going to be like, oh, this is how he feels about gay people, and then he has to go apologize. It's yeah, ridiculous. There's, there's reactionary words, and then there's and, words that. And faggot is one of them. Yeah, but it's, uh, I say it to my it's friend, M- I'll, I'll call my friend, like, what are you doing tonight? He goes, I gotta go out with my wife. I go, faggot. And then I'll hang up the phone. And there's nothing gay about it, yeah, but it's just way, a word that seems I, so ridiculous. I meant to, to tell situation. you to stop doing that to me. <laughs> stop hanging out with her. <laughs> yeah. But you said something interesting about when it's individual words. Like, a lot of people will get busted just for using a word, and the context goes away, and the irony right. goes away, and all that sort of stuff. But you made a really interesting point when I was talking to you for the book Satiristas about how what it does is give a roadmap to racists to not get in trouble, because all they have to do is avoid certain words. Yeah, you can kind of leap across the pond, because they just know what not to say, and they can continue thinking well, it. Well, wait a minute. So why did that, just out of curiosity, like, why was it that faggot was the word that came to you when he was trying to help you? Okay, oh. now, no, no, this is the thing. Now, this is the question. you're subconsciously These... gay, is what you're saying. No, I'm no. not. No. I just, like, I just think that... Why like, are you oh, judging wait, wait. that? <laughs> no, but this is... This is what happens, exactly. Exactly, right? No, this right here is what... These are the questions that they should ask. Rather than saying, you said it, you said it, so it, it means this. Why did it come? Because of the way I grew up, because of the way guys are. You, you're not supposed to be, I fell down, are you okay? Yeah, but it's, it's like, you're not supposed to But why does the word, but, but obviously, he's from oh, Boston. Well, can I, you know what? No, I guess that's what they say. So why didn't he use the uh, you're, You know what? And one what person from Boston's gonna get for? fucking offended and be like, well, what do you mean by that? We're not all from Southie. And then how did you mean Boston? You describe, oh, you describe you Boston perfectly. How did you describe it's, it? It's like a racist San Francisco. It's got that nice sort of, if I was gonna live in a city and raise kids, I could do this. It's got culture, it's got the symphony. And then it has all of that. Hey, you fucking quit. It's got all that shit. <laughs> but you see, when I was growing up in the Bronx, Right. Which is similar to, you know, vibe as, as where you grew up. Where well, what name are you from, the Bronx? Uh, Town Parkway area. Guinea bastard. Go ahead. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> now the guinea pigs are going to be upset. Yeah, but when I was a kid growing up in the Bronx, a faggot had no... It had, we didn't know what homosexual was, like eight, nine years old. Faggot just meant you wouldn't, like, you know, press the doorbell and run away. Right. What about George Collins' great routine? What's that? He goes, when he's growing up... A f- a fag was a guy that wouldn't go downtown with you and beat up the queers. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, go home, fag. Right. <laughs> but yeah, but that's it. That, is that, that in our background, I, mean, like, I, I literally didn't know that it had a sexual component until probably like maybe 12, 13, 14. Now that you do know that, it still comes out. It actually struck me as funny and I thought it would be a great bit because the bit is actually two straight guys. You can't have that fucking moment of like, yeah, you know, I was worried about you. Right, right. You, were, like, you I, can't have it. You get all weird. Like, dude, yeah, get the fuck away from me. Like, it, it, you're just not allowed to have that moment. So in the no, but, but it has nothing to do with gay people. But, they, but then that, that knee-jerk reaction is, oh, you said that word. Let's look it up on the chart. Oh, that means this and it means that. And now you have to go on TV because on the chart, it means you meant that when you said it. It's, but it's, when, you, but when you did that bit, it was really criticizing yourself for not being able to accept some sensitivity yeah, from another guy. Th- that's why guys drop dead at like 50 from like 40 years and not being able to admit a puppy's cute. You just got to keep pushing it down. Oh, I fucking care. And, and it's actually, 
It's a, it's a weakness. But so the question imagine, Liz but... asked is the way they should go about it when shit like that happens, rather than having one guy who got offended be like, he said this, this is exactly what he said, and this is what the fuck it meant. Apologize. Here's your podium. I that's think all I, think I wanted that's, to get yeah. to. That's right. But, yeah. See? And look what oh, we got to. We got again, to someplace guys. interesting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Once again, who is determining how somebody's intent is? Who is to determine, hey, you know, the way you said that was mean-spirited. I know a lot of fucking idiots that think a lot of shit is mean-spirited just because it goes against what they believe. Everything is subjective to each audience. So you can say one thing in front of one audience, say the same thing, and those people are offended because it offends them. Just like me, the shit that offends me. But it's like, I can't make those determinations. What offends you? All right, this is a bad example, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, people get crazy. I mean, like, I was on Twitter the other day. Jake Tapper from ABC News wrote, thanks, LA Times, because they reported that the grandson of someone famous, who I can't remember who, was shooting at some plane. So I wrote back to him, the only thing that would make the story more boring is if the person had psoriasis, because they were fucking talking about Kim Kardashian with psoriasis endlessly on the news, right? The national psoriasis people send me a Twitter thing, psoriasis is fucking serious and it's no joke. <laughs> And I wrote back, yes, it is. Fuck you. And so, That's why I always say you remind me of Dorothy Parker. That's right. So Colin, I tell the story to Colin in the airport yesterday. He goes, really? And he shows me a psoriasis on his elbow. <laughs> <laughs> and I have psoriasis on my foot. That's why we can say it. Yes. That's right. <laughs> But no, that's, that, that brings up a really good point. Like, you always say Indian people are cheap, yes. and then you tell a personal story with your dad, right. right? So it's really a personal story, but you talk about it as Indian culture in general. And yeah. you don't get in trouble for it, but right? Because the thing is, when I'm saying these things about me or my people, I'm really generalizing about everybody because at the end of the day, we all end up doing the exact same shit, but everybody thinks they're the only ones that do it. So when I'm talking about Indian people are cheap, there's Romanians reading, oh, we are cheap too, you know, and the, <laughs> or whatever you're talking about. They're always like, everybody thinks they're the only people that do this. And at the end of the day, they, they hear me say it and they go, ah, so it's not just us, it's them too, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. So yes. do you get people who just yeah. like really don't like Indian people cheering for the wrong reasons? Yes, you can tell by the laughter when the laughter, you know what I mean? And, uh, Does that mess with you when you're on stage? Like, yeah, it kind of fucks laugh. with my head a little bit because yeah. I'm like, you motherfuckers are missing the point here. And I wonder when people talk about race, and I've never seen your act, so I don't know. Appreciate that. But Bill, with, <laughs> and, and, and so, okay. but with Bill, I, I feel like when you talk about race, it evokes more questions and people talking. So why bring up race if you don't want to have a conversation that goes on further about race? Why just make a joke about oh, my people are stupid, or, or my people are cheap, or whatever it is, what's the point of that, ultimately? I go for the perspective of culture, because culturally, it's completely different than race. We're outsiders, and when you're an outsider, you have a better perspective of everything, and the more of an outsider you are, the more perspective you gain. But you do this Asian character, phenomenal voices, but I can't believe you don't get in trouble for it. No, because um, if there's any Chinese people here, they'll know, they, they immediately come to me and go, that was the best Hong Kong accent I ever heard. <laughs> and the, they recognize it immediately. I remember that too, watching like when you, I would watch Def Jam. And yeah, if it was yeah. a generic white voice, it would annoy me. But if it was a specific white voice, like you could picture the guy, yeah. and then, then you'd be like, that shit actually happened. Yeah. That's funny. But if it was just like, oh, I'm sitting in a chair. Oh. Well, yeah. I, I hated that. But like... Uh, Richard Pryor was the first person I ever heard who was not white do white voices. I, it, for the first time in my life, I was in the position of being the, the culture that is genericized to some stereotype that's like, really not, makes you feel good. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I went, I was watching Def Jam, and this comic opened up with, bitches ain't shit. And I was like, wow. Let's be honest, they ain't shit. I mean. <laughs> yeah, but if you really got underneath what he was saying, he's probably just afraid to get into a relationship, you know? I know. There's layers. <laughs> hey. Well, I, got, I, asked you, I didn't I got even to, think of it you that gotta go, way. You gotta go right now? Yeah, I got the 10.30 we started. You gotta go do a show. Yes, yes I do. Thank, Thank you, you so much for here. having me, everybody. <laughs>